Good morning, YouTube. JT Serenity Farms prepping here. What you're looking at is my dad's garage, karate studio, goat, and chicken barn. Yesterday morning, 9 o'clock, obviously, had a fire. Lost everything, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of tools, all his chickens, all his goats, but one. Two vehicles got fried, but were not inside the garage. Lost a side-by-side, -side, numerous other mementos and sporting equipment in the upstairs part. Okay, so this leads me to the question of, do you have all in the same place. What happens when we store all our preps in one place? Luckily for my dad, who is also a prepper, we didn't have any in these buildings. We do have them distributed throughout our property and several caches along the way to a bug out location if needed but point being had we had our preps in this building where there is ample storage for many many preps today we would be in deep shtf Let's talk about preps, important papers, documents, and that kind of stuff in a minute. Welcome back, YouTube. I apologize for the break. I was standing outside and it was quite windy, so I figured I would just wait until I got back to the cabin to finish. All right, so, as you saw from the first part of the video, what would happen if you had all your preps in one place? All your important papers, documents, certificates. Let's start with those, all right? So the banks are going to collapse eventually at some point. That seems inevitable to me. So I have hard copies of marriage certificate. I'm divorced. I have one of my divorce agreement. I have my birth certificate. I have copies of my daughter's birth certificates. I have copies of my ex-wife's birth certificate. I have a copy of my title to my car my truck, my boat, my camper, my side-by-side, -side, and my home, which I have no mortgage on. So, the banks collapse. When some form of government comes back into existence, at some point, people are going to owe money on properties, vehicles. You're going to have to be able to prove who you are. You're going to have to be able to prove this is your residence, that this is your vehicle, and that this is uh, your bank account statement even. Do not leave all of those documents in a safe deposit box in a bank or a credit union. In my opinion, if those places collapse, something will happen to all that paperwork. I'm not taking that chance. If you do have one, at least have a backup and a backup somewhere else. Okay, if you have a safe in your home, it's secured to the floor somewhere and hopefully it's fireproof, still have a backup to a backup to a backup. Okay. When 
government officials, banking officials, whoever, as sooner or later, someone's going to start going around to remove people from homes, to check if people are supposed to be in homes, all that kind of stuff. You are going to be able to need to prove all of it. Even then, if a government has completely NWO'd on us and the object is to get people out of their houses, it's not going to matter. But it may not get that far and making copies, very easy. I scanned all mine into my computer, put them all on a thumb drive, and I have that in a secured location. I have hard copies encased in plastic, and those are in a safe location. And then I have backups to those that I mailed to a trusted confidant in another location. So, that should take care of all your papers, which I would carry a copy with you at all times after an SHTF, especially if we have even odd driving days, checkpoints everywhere. You're going to be able to need to prove everything all the time. Okay, but let's get back to preps, mainly food and water. Okay, because someone's not going to sneak into my community to steal a rake. Okay, they're not going to break into my bug out location located in the middle of nowhere to steal my marshmallows and graham crackers for s'mores. Okay, so I have what I feel I need in my cabin for myself. I have located throughout the property another 30 day supply. I have a community room that has a locker that will hold enough food for one week at a time for the number of members I have in my group. Each group member will be allowed to have food items in their own uh, living quarters that they've decided to prep for above and beyond what they contribute to the group preps. I just purchased a 300 gallon plastic sewer tank with a manhole cover that I will bury somewhere on the property and put in there as much food as I possibly can. I have several caches on the way to my bug out location based on each route that I might have to take. Those are all only overnight rations and supplies because I can walk to my location in one day. It'll take all day. But if for some reason we're traveling with the entire group, and we need to stop and rest for the night. We have the supplies to do that. And then of course the bug out location. Which I deem temporary. Is supplied for three months at this time. For enough food for the people that will decide to go up there. I'm working on making that a year's worth. But as we all know takes time takes money so I cannot think of a better reason to not have all your food and water preps in one place than the first part of this video in what happened to my dad's property yesterday I hope this serves as a little wake-up call to all of us that we need to separate our preps just in case of an event such as a fire, a natural disaster, thieves, hoodlums, scumbags, whatever it might be. We don't want everything in one place where they hit the mother load just by stumbling across 
one building. Okay. It also had me thinking last night that I discovered a few holes in some of my prepping plans. And today I started to write down a list of how I can rectify those situations. So I hope maybe this spurs you to think the same thing. And for now, it'll be JT signing off.